We bought an abandoned homestead and it came with not one, but two abandoned trucks. In this video, I'm gonna try to get this old girl running again. The only problem is that I don't even know if it has an engine. Oh boy. Pack rats, all of the wiring is pulled out. Whoa! <laughs> no freaking way! The brakes work, but they're not good. This is really steep. Do I think that the truck is going to run? I think there's a reason that it's parked at the top of the hill and that they didn't take it when they sold the property. I'm still feeling optimistic. We're headed to the abandoned property. Which is up there. Forget your foregone conclusions. Settle in, settle now. Give up your sweet illusions. Cause your walls are falling down. This is a 1982 Chevy K10, or maybe GMC. I don't know what this truck is, but we're about to find out if this truck runs. Oh my gosh, is it this easy? Oh, yep, the latch moves. Who's under the hood? V8, 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 V8. One, two, three, four plug wires. It's a V8, cool. What in the world is this thingy? Oh, is that for a smog? I think that's for a smog pump. I wonder why the air filter's missing. But other than that, I mean, everything looks to be here. I can't tell if it's a 305 or a 350. It's got power steering. Oh, 5.0 liter, it's a 305. That's okay, that's still a V8. What are these things called? Close pinned. Close pinned. Very suspicious of the fact that the air filter's missing and somebody close pinned this piece of trash bag over the top of the carburetor. But I guess they removed a step for me because now I don't have to remove the air filter. Is there oil in it? She got oil. She needs some love for sure, but first things first, I think we should just see if it turns over. Handy workbench. Okay, breaker bar. One of you out there watching this knows exactly what size every single bolt on this entire truck is, I bet. 11 sixteenths. Oh, nope, smaller, five eighths? Okay, now we're just gonna give her a gentle rock and see if, oh, it turns over. It's not totally seized. So what this is doing, is the harmonic balancer on, is on the end of the crank. And so by turning the harmonic balancer over, I'm turning the entire engine over and making the pistons go up and down. So we're gonna try to go around one time just to make sure that nothing is locked up or seized before we try to turn it over with the starter. Everything turns over. The alternator's turning over. The power steering pump's turning over right now. Turning the water pump a little bit. I wonder if there's coolant in it. Dry. No coolant. What we're doing right now, that doesn't really matter, but it's definitely something to keep in mind before we try to drive it away. Drive it away? <laughs> yeah, feeling hopeful. I'm just gonna poke around and look at some other stuff real quick. A little bit of moisture, but it's not all rusty up there, so I don't think it has a blown head gasket. Throttle. I don't think that's the original throttle cable, though. I doubt it made a curly cue like that. Let's also not the original carburetor, though. She's got electric choke, though. Immediately, I noticed there's a red wire here which would normally mean positive, and it goes to the alternator bracket. Are you positive? <laughs> I am positive that that's not right. This positive cable goes down to the starter. So this is the positive for the battery. This is the negative. Wiring on old cars like this terrifies me, especially with how much this wiring harness has been monkeyed with. <laughs> Whatever is going on here. I don't think this splice is original. And that goes down to the starter's positive it's not fused at all. Yeah, the bailing wire, wire loom. Let's just stab the battery in and see what happens. Also very odd that it didn't have a battery in it, which means it wasn't just parked here and forgotten. Somebody intentionally removed the battery. Who knows? Look at that. I have the right battery. The hold down even is even gonna work with this battery. Let's hook up the positive first. That's kind of terrifying how close that is to the firewall. And it's good that nothing's happening. That means there's no short circuits anywhere. <laughs> if there was a big old arc when I did that, that would mean that there's a short somewhere in here. And I think we should see if the keys are in it. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, if we don't have the keys, it's like we're done. Nope, oh, the door's unlocked though. Oh boy. Ooh. Pack rats. Whatever this is. Oh, it's gross in here. Oh. 
think that's on par with 1980s vehicle safety. I don't think Oliver's riding in this anytime <laughs> soon. Okay, what is going on here? Somebody has had the wiring torn out of the dash of this thing. Oh man, look at this guys. All of the wiring is pulled out from behind the dash and there are a bunch of splices in this. Potentially they lost the key or something. Well, we have two options, which are to figure out whatever that mess of wiring is or basically hot wired under the hood. You didn't turn this camera on? It just turned itself on. Oh, whoa, do that again. Do the headlights work? No, but the running lights do. Oh wait, do it again. One headlight works. Nice. I've come to the conclusion that no matter what, if I get this truck running, I'm redoing the wiring. I mean, look at this. This is the main power wire that powers the distributor. There's stuff like this all over this thing because the pack rats have been into it. These are the two wires that we need. This one here powers the distributor. This one here is the crank signal for the starter. I'm just gonna cut them here and run them over to the battery and we're about to see if this thing will turn over. Starting with the purple one that goes to the starter because if we don't have a starter that works, we definitely don't need a distributor that works. I'm just gonna plug this into the battery. Theoretically now, if I touch this to this, it's gonna start, well, it's gonna turn over. It's not gonna start. Is it in par for neutral or? Uh, we should probably make sure of that. It's an automatic. Okay, it's in park and the transfer case I put into neutral, so it can't move. Wait, which one was the positive? This one, ready? Yeah. It's gonna crank. It's turning over. I have been driving square body Chevys for longer than you have been alive. I have been driving square body Chevys for longer than your granddaddy has been alive. And I tell you what, there ain't nothing tougher than a Chevy, except for my Ridge wallet. And it fits in this pocket or this pocket. And it even fits in this pocket. And the Ridge is today's video sponsor. Made of anodized aluminum, the Ridge wallet is lightweight, slim, and durable. It expands to have room for up to 12 cards, plus a spot for cash. The Ridge wallet can withstand harsh conditions and protect against digital thieves with the RFID blocking technology. I have been using my Ridge wallet for four months now, and it has actually changed my life. The slim profile of the Ridge wallet allows me to put it in my front pocket instead of my back pocket, and now my back doesn't hurt anymore. With the 365 day risk-free trial, if you aren't satisfied, you can send it back for a full refund. But with over 3 million customers and a lifetime warranty, I have a feeling that you're gonna love it. And I suppose that if your truck uses a key, you can also upgrade your key storage. Seamlessly store up to six keys and get rid of that annoying jingle with the Ridge key case. Their sleek packaging combined with over 30 colors and styles makes the Ridge the perfect gift. And the recent expansion of their women's line means that they have something for everyone. With their 11th year anniversary sale currently happening, now is the perfect time to upgrade your wallet and key game. Through April 1st, you can save up to 30% by going to ridge.com forward slash ambition. You can also save up to 20% off their ring collection. Thanks again to Ridge for sponsoring this video. At least now there are two things in my life that are indestructible. Whoa, it's pumping fuel. Look, it's Courtney, it's pumping fuel. Okay. The fuel pump works okay, okay. and it has fuel in it. See that? Yeah. <laughs> No way. There's no way that it's already pumping fuel. Like, I don't even understand. It usually takes forever to get these old fuel pumps to prime. It's a mechanical fuel pump driven off the, uh, driven off the engine itself. I'm like pretty sure that if I just bring the pink wire over and hook it on, we'll have power to the distributor. It might be this close to running. No. Pink wire. Get out of here, pink wire. Oh no, it's too short. <laughs> I like your thinking. This wire is too long and that wire is too short. Oh, there must be a wire nut under here somewhere I can steal. I didn't bring any wiring supplies. I'm willing to bet the reason this thing didn't run was something electrical, although that wouldn't explain the missing air filter. Mysteries, mysteries. Friends don't let friends do automotive wiring like that. So this is going to be power to the distributor. I'm just gonna touch it to this real quick to make sure that we don't have something crazy happen. So that's good. 
for a fast start on the coldest days. This is starting fluid. We are pumping gas already, so there's a good chance we don't need this, but it, once it starts cranking over, I'm probably gonna shoot a little shot of this down the carburetor and we'll see what happens. So this wire controls the starter, and then this wire is gonna give us power to the ignition, which is gonna give us sparks on the spark plug. Okay. So now, I don't have enough hands, so I need you to spray a little bit of that into there. Practice spraying it over here first. Yep, just into the- Just like a poof? Into the carburetor. How many poofs? Just a little poof into the carburetor. Just one poof? Just one little poof into the carburetor. Okay. Go ahead. I missed! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing's gonna run. Riley. <laughs> Are we gonna do it again? Try You're addicted it. to that stuff? No, I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Oh no, we're good. Oh, that was me continuing to hold the starter wire on oh. because normally once it starts, you'd let go of the key, but I kept- It I, was running? It was running. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. We're going to crank her over. A little spark. A little starting foot. It's running! It's running! It's running. <laughs> It's oh it my god. Good. That's without the choke. Oh my gosh, Riley! <laughs> <Grab that camera. laughs> oh my gosh! I cannot believe that it's running. I didn't have to give it any little bump of the throttle, it just runs. Like and it sounds really good. <laughs> We've already gotten further than I ever expected to get with this project. So I don't really know what to do next. I mean, the next step is gonna to be to try to drive it. But the problem with that is that without the key, it's stuck in park and the steering wheel's locked. This cassette has the Bumble Boogie on it. I thought it was and I got excited, but it's a Glade smelly thing. Is the key in the truck? Where are the popular spots to hide the spare key? Gas store? Ooh, that's a sweet hubcap. Rear bumper or hitch? Like back in here somewhere? Spare key, spare key. You know someone hit a spare key on this thing somewhere in the last 40 years. Where are the keys? And why does a Chevrolet have GMC hubcaps? Oh, two gas doors. This thing's got twin tanks. I am losing hope that I will find the keys anywhere obvious. This tricked me earlier. I thought this was the keys, but it was just some kind of keychain. Visors. I don't think I'm finding the keys to this thing. How to remove K10 ignition without key. Come on, Google, teach me how to steal a truck. I think it's possible to remove the lock cylinder without having the key, which hopefully will make it so that the steering wheel is free and I can pull it out of park. Step one is just to figure out how to get into the driver's side of the truck. <laughs> okay, here we go. The seat is super gross. And I found this apron in the truck. It's an old Walmart apron. Oh my goodness, is this a tilt column? It is not. I don't even fit in this truck. I also found another lock cylinder, which I'm very suspicious about. Here we go. Oh my gosh, my butt is getting wet, which means whatever nasties are on that seat are soaking into my butt. Come on, little ring. One spring, one button. <laughs> Someone's been here before. Okay, steering wheel nut off. And now I need a steering wheel puller. Yeah, I can tell there's been a puller on this. Dang it! I think that's as far as we're getting on this one. Gently close the hood. All right, we're off to town to get some tools. We'll see you tomorrow.
Good morning and welcome back to the old K10. I am still at awe with how quickly this thing started yesterday and it's had me wondering all night, how long has this truck been sitting here? One thing that we do know is the burned down cabin that's right up here. By the way, if you haven't seen the video where we tour the burned down cabin, I'd recommend checking that video out. But that burned down cabin, I believe burned down in 2005. And from what we were told by the neighbors, the family never returned after the cabin burned down. So I think this truck's been here since 2005. The last sticker on the registration says 2005. But let's see what other clues we can uncover. I think these tires are older than the current standard four digit date code that I'm used to where the first two are the week and the next two are the, are the last two digits of the year. So if they have a date code, I don't know how to read it. Here are some ads for a 1996 Yamaha Wave Venture, then a Mercury Sport something. Okay, here's like a job application, and it was printed in 2002. Here's a receipt for 2002. Price per gallon, one dollar and three cents. I have never bought gas that cheap, that's for sure. Here's another receipt, Walmart. I think they bought a Snickers almond and a chocolate bar. I'll keep looking for clues, but I think 2005 is a pretty good bet of the last time this truck was driving. That's enough snooping around. Let's see if we can get the steering column unlocked. All right, picked up this steering wheel puller tool yesterday at the auto parts store. This is actually a loaner tool. Never used a steering wheel puller before. Let's try these two bolts. I'll tell you what I should have brought. I should have brought a chainsaw so I can get to the driver's side door of this thing more easily. Ugh. Let's see, are these the right bolts? Too small. Yeah, that's probably right. Right enough. Loaner tools are not always the best tools, but for the zero dollars they cost, they're pretty darn good. Oh. <laughs> you guys saw me beat on this thing a little bit with the wrench yesterday and it was not moving. Now it's just like, <clears throat> just shows having the right tool makes all the difference. Watching a video while I do it step by step. I think now this thing is supposed to just kind of pop off. Just in my pocket knife. There we go. All right. Threads on there. And that slides over that. Okay, now when we tighten this up, it's gonna gain access to a snap ring right there. Oh yeah, there we go. Cool, that totally worked. Success. Fast forward a few steps. It took me a while to figure out how to get this turn signal thingy bopper out of there and, and I'm seriously wondering if I'm going to be able to put all this back together again. But onwards, I think if I take this screw out, I think the cylinder's gonna come out now. Woo! We got the ignition cylinder out. I have a fresh new one that actually has the key. Okay, Riley, don't lose the keys. New cylinder, the retainer bolt, okay. Oh, it's good. Yeah, I just got the uh, replacement uh, ignition cylinder in. Now I just have to figure out how to put the steering column back together. Got it. Okay, see you in a bit. What did we do in a world before cell phones? Ah, button went flying. Steering wheel's back on and we're done. Did I put the old one back in? No, no, the keys are still in the new one. Now we can unlock the steering wheel and we can take it out of park. We are one step closer just think of this thing can drive. I just jumped in the Jeep to drive back to the house for lunch and uh, nothing. <laughs> Maybe I am driving the K10 home today. What is going on? Why won't you start? That's probably why. Oh, this Jeep needs some love and some wiring work. All right, will she start now? I know what's going on. 
the neutral safety switch was stuck. Okay, here we go. Headed home for lunch. If the question is what's next, the answer is, I don't really know. I'm gonna open the hood again, make sure the engine's still there. Did you break all these little branches or did a deer eat these? I, I have not been eating any branches. A deer came along and ate all this? Still there. Now that I have the steering column working and the ignition switch and the key, I'm tempted to hook these, these wires back up where they belong and see if it turns over like that because it'd be way better to be able to turn it off from inside than have to run over here and yank on the wire. Not a permanent repair, but at least they're marine grade. So if we end up underwater, our connectors should be good. Wait, which one's pink and which one's purple? This is the pink one. Could have given myself a little more slack down there. It has washer fluid in it. Should we see if it starts from inside? Where's your key? I left them in the ignition. What? What if someone had stolen it? <laughs> That'd be crazy. We just come back and the truck's gone. I hear something. Turn signal? It doesn't, it has a mechanical fuel oh, pump. Wait, the blinker's on. Is it? Oh, that's really funny. That's what it was. <laughs> I'm gonna go hop in it and see if it starts. Hey, who locked it? What? It's stuck now. Okay, hopping in. Okay. All right, are you ready to shut it off if it catches on fire? Something just made a noise under here. I hit the brake pedal, just out of instinct. Okay, I'm gonna try to start it from in here. It's cranking! Can you give me a little shot of the ether? It's cranking. <laughs> no way. Half the wiring is torn out from under the dash. It looks like somebody was trying to hotwire the truck. Okay, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Woo! They'll backfire. Yeah. I think it's gonna start. Little ether. Oh, she wants to start so bad. Woo! It's backfiring. Yeah, it's interesting that it ran so good yesterday and it's not today. And I wonder if it has to do with the choke. I'm gonna turn the choke off. Just remove the wire from the electric choke to see if we're getting too much choke and that's why it won't run. I think it's gonna start. I'm feeling positive. I looked at the gauges. The alternator works. I have no idea if we have oil pressure. I'm gonna hook the choke back up again. Courtney gave it some starting fluid and now nothing, which makes me think that we lost spark. I think in that position, we should have 12 volts here. 11, so yes, we have 12 volts. Can you? We know what you're about to ask me and I've been dreading it. Oh, yeah. Well, okay, either you can, can you either start the truck, please? Yeah, to the forest. Oh, where's this, the, the uh, starting foot? Oh, can I just crank it from the outside? Yeah, I think you probably can. Yeah, try cranking. Now turn it on. Okay, now try cranking. Goodness, Courtney. Was it flooded? <sighs> the
The, the factory pressure oil pressure gauge didn't show anything, but then I noticed it has an aftermarket pressure gauge down below the dash and it has oil pressure. So the alternator's working and it has oil pressure. I'm calling it right now. We're gonna make it to the shop. Drop it in the comments below. Do you think we're gonna make it into the shop? I didn't bring a gauge, so I guess we're just gonna be going to uh, more than none. I mean, they have air in them. Did it move at all? Yeah, they need more. Okay, good enough on that one. Oh, this one's super flat. Oh, it's inflating. It's inflating. Woo! I know, but why are they GMC hubcaps on a Chevy? I don't even, I've never heard of a Wildcat EXT. This one is very bald, so I think there's probably a worn out ball joint on this side. Okay, time to drive it. I think it's time to pull it forward. I tested the brakes and the pedal feels firm, so now it's just a question of does the transmission work? for low, I think I'm gonna put it in two wheel drive. Alrighty, I'm gonna put it in gear. Nothing. Oh, wait, it wanted to move. It's moving! Ah, it's moving! <laughs> Courtney! You want to ride? No. It drives, it drives, it drives, it totally drives. Did you think that that was going to happen today? Not, not a chance. I, I mean, no. Gosh, man, Chevy, like a rock. Do you want to take it to town? Kind of. We know that it has transmission fluid in it because it moves, but I, before I drive it more, I want to make sure it actually has at least enough transmission fluid. Yes, you're supposed to check it with it running, but it doesn't even register on the dipstick. So we're gonna add some transmission to it. About two quarts. Here we go. All right, we're gonna try reverse. Woo! It goes backwards. We go head forward. <laughs> the brakes work, but they're not good. I've got a huge smile on my face as I say the brakes don't work very well. Courtney has this like sheepish grin. This is really steep. Oh gosh. This truck is sweet. I'm gonna start it up again. All right, the first gear. <laughs> Here we go. I thought it was going to be in my head. I cannot believe that I'm driving this truck down there. Me either, Riley right Casey. <laughs> Ooh. Hi, old cabin. My dozer will come for you soon. 
Hi, excavator. Oh, this truck's sweet. I think it's ready to go to town. Who's gonna stop me now? Who's gonna tear me down? Remember, this is my game. Yes, it is. Really? Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe and uh, well, we'll see you next time.